Hundreds of people gathering at Westminster Abbey in London for an annual service that marks the break from tradition because King Charles touched on a number of issues that he's felt strongly about in this address on Commonwealth Day. Issues that he's personally advocated about for decades, including climate change and sustainability. For more on what it means, Richard Berthelsen is standing by, CTV News Royal Commentator. Richard, I want to get your thoughts on what we heard from the King today and how it was something of a break from tradition because he talked about some pretty specific issues in this Commonwealth speech. Yeah, it is a bit of a break from tradition. The real big break is that the king delivered the speech himself. Mm. The queen has been given to sending out written messages on this day or maybe recording something. But he actually spoke during the service and read his official Commonwealth Day message, which, of course, was a bit of an homage to his late mother, who was head of the Commonwealth, you know, well over 70 years. And he has just taken on that role since September. So there was that aspect to it. But you also saw some references to various issues within the Commonwealth, notably around the Commonwealth Charter, which is a statement of principles for Commonwealth members to live up to. And that is really problematic for some Commonwealth members because a lot of those things are about human rights, gay rights, and other issues, which in some parts of the Commonwealth have been you know, not exactly observed very, very well. In fact, just the opposite. And he also made reference to climate change, the environment more broadly, and sustainability, which are things that he always has done. Now, the Commonwealth Day message is an opportunity for the king in his capacity as head of the Commonwealth to speak a little more personally, because it is not a speech which is given on the basis of government advice. It is really a personal message from him in his capacity as head of the Commonwealth. I don't think he really strayed out of those lines. I think it was pretty uh, what we might expect, but it was really going to be a challenge. It is going to be a challenge for some members of the Commonwealth to live up to some of the ideals, particularly in the Charter. Mm. Let's listen to just a little bit of what the King was saying uh, during this landmark speech here, Richard. The Commonwealth has been a constant in my own life, and yet its diversity continues to amaze and inspire me. Its near boundless potential as a force for good in the world demands our highest ambition. So give me a sense, Richard, you know, listening to, and I know you've listened to the speech, you know, what you think this says about King Charles. Well, I think it says, you know, the first part of the speech, which we didn't hear right now, it, you know, really is an homage, as they say, to the approach his mother has taken, his own personal commitment to the Commonwealth. I mean, it is something he has known his whole life. There's no one basically on the face of the planet who's traveled more uh, to all of these countries and tried to keep this organization together than, you know, the, the, the king's late mother and himself. So it is kind of really tilling, you know, or well-tilled soil in that sense that he has that kind of relationship. And what's not often understood about the Commonwealth is that it is a growing organization. It has gone in the last few years from 51 or two nations to 56. Uh, nations are wanting to join the organization because it is a force and a forum for discussion that is unscripted and it avoids some of the major power plays uh, around the United States and China and Russia. It is an organization that works on the fringes of those as a multilateral organization. And we know in our own country, we have huge Commonwealth ties and Canadians are very proud of those at times, such as the Commonwealth Games, for example. So this is an organization where most of the countries are now republics. They have their own heads of state. There are 15 where the king is the head of state as well, like Canada. But really, this is an organization for multilateral cooperation, focus on diversity, focus on historic ties, but a lot of com countries com countries are extremely interested in continuing their relationship within the Commonwealth, as I say. Hey, what do you make just briefly about the protests outside by the group Republic saying, not my king, and, you know, there was the, the Charles and, and Camilla were booed recently on a trip to Essex, and people were saying, you know, including one saying the king is just a bloke in a suit who's spending lots of our money. Your, your read on, on is that to be expected given, you know, the transition? Well, I think there's no doubt that with Elizabeth II gone, there is a bit more freedom by, for some groups who feel that they can speak out against the monarchy now in a way that would have been extremely in poor taste with the long reign of the queen who was universally respected. You know, the king has got to earn that. 
There obviously are forces uh, who want to see a change uh, in the who is the head of state of various countries. I don't think that they're protesting the Commonwealth per se on this particular day, but they certainly are protesting that. And they have showed up in very small numbers at his various visits around the kingdom. But I think one has to look in some perspective at the numbers of people who have shown up in these events who are there to cheer and to see the king and to talk to him in a, in a supportive way and the small group that isn't. And of course, in a democracy, these views are going to exist and we're going to see this much more than we have in the past. And we're certainly going to see it as we lead to the coronation. Appreciate this, Richard. Thank you.